Welcome grade 12s. Today we are starting with sense organs, the eye. But before we start with our new topic, we need to recap and understand what the nervous system's function is. Well, the nervous system is there to detect and react to any changes that are taking place in our body's internal environment and our body's external environment meaning they are there to react to any changes taking place inside our bodies or outside our bodies what do we call these changes that are taking place outside our body's environment we call them a stimulus for example an explosion is a stimulus a change in, in, in the light intensity is a stimulus our body reacts to these changes or to these stimuli that are out, taking place outside our bodies so what does this nervous system consist of our nervous system is consisting of millions and millions of neurons or nerve cells these nerve cells that are inside our nervous system, they are there carrying nerve impulses to and from our CNS. Okay, so let's begin with slide number one. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are the two parts that the nervous system can be divided into. So our nervous system can be divided into the CNS, which is the central nervous system, and the PNS, which is the peripheral nervous system. How are they different? Well, the CNS consists of only two parts, which is the brain and the spinal cord. Together, the brain and the spinal cord make up our CNS, which is our central nervous system, where all information is being processed the other part of our nervous system is our peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system is consisting of millions and trillions again of neurons I told you what are neurons they are nerve cells what do they do let's read the neurons okay connect the CNS meaning they are connecting our brain and our spinal cord with the receptors and effectors of the body what is what are the neurons doing they are connecting our brain and spinal cord to the receptors which are our sense organs our mouth our nose our eyes our tongue our skin right they are connecting all of those parts of our body all of those organs to the brain and spinal cord and they are also connecting the effectors of our body which are the muscles and the glands also to the brain and the spinal cord so who is linking the two systems together it is the job of the neurons the neurons are linking our brain and spinal cord meaning our cns to our pns they are linking the brain and spinal cord to the receptors and the effectors of our body why ask yourself why is it so important that the cns and pns be linked together well both of these systems need to be in communication with one another so that we can react to any changes that are taking place in our body's external environment for example if there is an explosion what is the stimulus? Explosion outside the body's environment. We don't have to stand and wait to die. We can actually react to this uh, uh, change out that, are that is taking place outside our body. We can react to this explosion by running away. So that message needs to reach our muscles and glands of our body, allowing us to run away from this dangerous situation. So that's important to know. There has to be a link between the CNS and the PNS. Let's move on to slide number two. So receptors of the human body. We have five sense organs. We have the skin, the tongue, the nose, the eye, and the ear. 
each of our five sense organs contain its own receptor cells or receptors. Each kind of receptor is sensitive to a specific stimulus. For example, my skin contains temperature receptors and the temperature receptors in my skin are sensitive only to changes in temperature and not to any other stimuli. In my tongue, I have receptors that are sensitive only to chemicals in the food. My nose contains receptors that are only sensitive to chemicals in the air. My eye contains receptors that are only sensitive to light. My ear contains receptors that are only sensitive to sound. I also have position receptors in my ear that are sensitive to the positioning of my body as well as to the positioning of my head. So if you look at our table, you will notice here are our five sense organs on the left and on the right it's telling you that the receptors within our sense organs are sensitive to these stimuli in the environment. The skin is sensitive to pressure, the skin is sensitive to pain and to temperature. The tongue receptors are sensitive only to the chemicals in food while the nose receptors are sensitive to chemicals in the air. The eye is sensitive to light, which is the stimulus of light, and the ear is sensitive to the stimulus of sound as well as to position of the head. All the sense organs with their receptor cells react to the stimulus coming from the outside environment and they convert these stimuli into a nerve impulse which is directly then transferred to our central nervous system to be processed. Let's begin with the external structure of the eye. Please remember that all structures found externally help in the protection of our eye. The first structure will be our orbit or eye socket. Now the orbit or the eye socket is found within the skull, deeply embedded within our skull. It helps for our eyeball to not protrude out of, of our faces. Our eyeballs are found within a socket and that is why it is so protected. That socket or orbit is lined by a layer of skin and fat. That layer of skin and fat acts as a shock absorber. Each of our eyes contain muscles. We find six muscles per eye and these muscles play a role in eye movement. Our eyelids is also a structure for, found on the outside of the eye externally. Eyelids with eyelashes. Now the eyelids are a layer of skin that's covering the front of our eye. That's our eyelid. And the hairs are the eyelashes. Now the eyelid which is the skin, is offering our eye protection while the lashes keep out dust and bright light. Under the inner rim of our eyelid, we find glands known as the meibomian glands. Those meibomian glands under our inner eyelid are busy secreting an oil like a lubricant that's offering our eyelid moisture. It's offering our eyelid the ability to be lubricated so that when there's movement, our eyes are not dry and it's not painful. The Bible. The conjunctiva, lacrimal glands and the eyebrows are also external structures of our eyes and they also play a role in our eyes protection. Let's begin with the conjunctiva. The conjunctiva of our eye is a transparent layer. 
It's a layer of epithelium that's see-through, transparent, and it's found inside our eyelid and over the surface of our eye. The function of the conjunctiva is to protect our eyeball and any irritation that occurs in the conjunctiva of our eye causes tears. The lacrimal glands are also known as the tear glands. Where should we find them? Well, they are found inside the upper eyelids and they open up in the outer corners of our eye. The lacrimal or the tear glands secrete tears. These are the tear glands and the function of those tears are to wash out the dirt and to kill any bacteria that's prevalent in your eyes. Eyebrows consist of hair and those eyebrows are preventing sweat from running straight into our eyes. Now imagine the ladies who do not have eyebrows. Their sweat is going to roll directly into their eyes. <laughs> Let's take a look at the internal structure of the eye. Internally we find many structures and they all work together to ensure the correct functioning of our eye. If you look carefully, you will notice that the eye has different layers. We have an outermost layer, we have a middle layer, and we have an innermost layer. The outer layer is called the sclera, the middle layer is the choroid, and the innermost layer is the retina. Let's discuss them in that particular order. Let's begin with the sclera. Now the sclera, as you noticed, is the outermost covering it's the white of our eye and it's made up of very dense connective tissue there it covers all of the eyeball except for the exposed portion of the eye where it is clear and known as the cornea in front now the function of our sclera is to protect the inner parts of the eye and it also gives shape to the eyeball as well the choroid which is the middle layer there you go it's the dark colored area inside it contains blood vessels that's why it's so dark and it has a pigment there dark pigment called melanin what is the function of the melanin there it's to absorb the stray light that you will notice that the choroid is continuous with the ciliary body and the iris the function of the choroid because it contains the blood vessels, it provides oxygen and nutrients to the eye and it removes waste products as well, such as CO2. It also absorbs any scattered light that's coming through. Let's take a look at the innermost layer, which is the retina. The retina has rods and cones. They contain the photoreceptor cells. The, what are the photoreceptor cells? They are the rods and the cones. The retina is a very light sensitive area on which our image falls. The rods are there for vision in dim light, while the cones are there for color vision and vision in bright light. Let's take a look at the front of the eye. Let's begin with the ciliary muscle. Now the ciliary muscle has a function where it is able to alter the shape of the lens for near and distant vision. Yes, it plays a role in accommodation. The ciliary body is there to secrete aqueous humor, which is the liquid found in our eye chamber in front of our eye. The iris is there to control the amount of light that's entering our eye. The cornea is transparent. Because it's transparent, it allows light through all the way to the retina. It's able to refract, meaning bend, and help focus the light rays. Pupil is the opening in the iris, allowing light to enter the inner part of our eye. The aqueous humor is a colorless watery fluid 
it maintains the shape of our eyeball in front of our lens it refracts light and it also allows substances to diffuse in and out of the lens and the cornea our suspensory ligament is there to hold our lens in position behind our lens we have the vitreous humor which is a jelly like substance it helps to maintain the shape of our eyeball at the back of the eye we find our yellow spot now the yellow spot is also known as fovea and it has only cones there and it is the region that provides us with the clearest vision our blind spot does not contain photoreceptors Therefore no vision will occur when the image is focused onto our blind spot. The optic nerve is going to convey impulses from the retina taking it directly to the cerebrum of our brain which is the site that is responsible for sensory sensation.